This is the Spec5 Relay, a mesh-tastic node for mounting on a mast outside. And this is the Spec5 Beacon XL Plus. So we are gonna put Huntsville, Texas on the mesh-tastic map. This is something I've wanted to do for a while, so I'm excited to get to it. Spec5 was kind enough to reach out to me and ask if I'd be interested in reviewing these products. So they did send them to me for free, so if you're triggered by that, go watch a Smoke and Ape video. But the rest of us, uh, let's, let's figure out what the heck we're doing, because I don't have any idea what I'm doing. So the way this relay is supposed to work, we gotta take this apart and, and I think plug in a battery or something, we gotta hook up the antenna. But this is a solar mesh-tastic node. So we have a solar panel that's integrated into it. We've got some straps here, some what look to be comically large uh, hose clamps, but they, they wanted to do these really large ones because they don't know what people are gonna be putting these on. So like you could have a fence post or something, you need a really large uh, one of these hose clamp thing, so. Uh, but if it's, you know, if you got something shorter, just cut it. So I'm gonna put this on my fiberglass mast thing outside. Um, so it should work. We should have no problem. And then it comes with this um, eight DBI gain, 915 megahertz antenna that is the N type connector. So that's fantastic. So let's, uh, let's get to cracking. So the first thing we want to do is install the antenna because we don't want the mesh-tastic just transmitting without an antenna. So we're just going to slide that in the uh, mount there. I think this got a little damaged in shipping. This is, like, I don't know if you can see how that's bent. This is bent. Shouldn't affect anything, but this is bent too. So spec five, just FYI, maybe, uh, work on your packaging. So 10 millimeter, of course it's a 10 millimeter. Go ahead and tighten this down. They say don't over tighten it, you just wanna make it snug so the antenna's not moving, okay? And then we can take, they got this little SMA guy here to the uh, end connector. Go ahead and screw that into the antenna. Now we can unscrew the top here because we need to plug the battery into the actual node. And we get to see what's inside. Ha! So there we are. So we've got a rack board thing over a couple uh, 18650 LiPo cells. And we need to plug this power cord. Uh, how does it go? Into there. Make sure this is tightened down. Okay, that should be good. I think this is the Bluetooth antenna here. You can see that's the Bluetooth antenna. And we can close her back up. Then we can install the solar panel, which goes on this, but we need to unscrew this to get it mounted properly. So just one screw there, two screws on the other side. And that comes off. Put our bracket on and screw these back down. All right, that's good. And screw the mount back on. I'm not going to over tighten it quite yet because I'm going to adjust it when we get it mounted. So now this can angle up and down and it, all, it can also turn. So you can kind of point it south-ish, so it gets the most amount of sun during the day. And then you've got another like adjustment screw down here to uh, tighten down the turning. So let's, uh, let's go install it. So after I get done telling you about these long hose clamps, I'm trying to put it on my mast here, but there's not enough threads in the hose clamps to actually make it work. So I'm gonna have to run to the hardware store and get some different hose clamps. And $7 and 77 cents later, I got two smaller uh, ones of these. So let's see how this goes. Still too big. Okay, three trips to the hardware store. 
still $7.77. I mean, if you're doing a project and you only go to the hardware store once, are you really even doing it right? If this doesn't work, I'm just gonna throw this off the roof and we'll just have a destruction party. I think we're gonna be good now though. Oh yeah. Okay, so now that they're both on, my goal is to get it like right around here. So, should be able to do that. Yes! I mean, I guess that'll work. All right, that should be good. And then, I can adjust the solar panel. I think somewhere around there should be okay. I mean, it's quarter to three and the sun's right there. I don't know. Should we just aim it due south? Might be okay. Tighten that down a little bit. All right. She is installed. And that's what she looks like. That's pretty sweet. I went ahead and put some, uh, I put some amalgamating tape and then some like nice Teflon electrical tape over both uh, of the antenna connections there to keep it sealed up, but everything else should be pretty waterproof theoretically. So that's pretty awesome. Turn it into the regular antenna farm there. Got the, the mesh-tastic uh, Spec 5 relay and then my VHF UHF antenna and some Chinese uh, weather station. So that's pretty sweet. Now let's hook this up to the phone and play around with it a little bit. So now that my node is up and it looks oh so beautiful, I'm really excited to get Huntsville on the air with Meshtastic. I'm gonna go ahead and open the Meshtastic app and I'm gonna connect to it. Now, it's important to, to realize like what this is actually for and how it works. So the Bluetooth range on this, just like every other Meshtastic device, is not the greatest. So probably when I need to make any configuration changes, which will probably be very rare, I'll need to come like at least into my living room I can connect to it. If I'm in my studio, I can't connect to it. It's just too far away and it's going through the house and walls and stuff. Um, but this is really designed to be, because my area has like almost zero mesh-tastic um, around, you're just gonna set this up as a client, which it already is from Spec 5. So I'm connected to it. I'm gonna go to settings and I, I just want to do like three things. The first, I'm going to go to user, and I want to change the, the long and the short name, make it something a little more appropriate. So I'm going to call this the K-Murder Mansion for the long name, and I'll just put like MRD for the short name, then we can hit save, and then it'll reboot and do its thing. And there we are, K-Murder Mansion. Then back under settings, I'm gonna go to device configuration and hit Bluetooth. And this is where you can change the pin number. It's default one, two, three, four, five, six. But I'm gonna go ahead and change this to something a little more appropriate for me. And then we'll save that again. And it's just reconnected. And then I'm gonna go to settings and I'm gonna go under position. And there isn't a GPS device in this, which is fine by me because this is just a stationary thing. So I'm actually gonna disable GPS and I'm gonna turn fixed position on. And basically, from what I understand, that's just gonna take my position from my phone and transmit that out. So people should know where it is, roughly. It, it has like a, um, what's it called? Dilution of precision, so, you know. They won't be able to just pinpoint where I am, but. And look at that, it's actually working. I've got my uh, Spec 5, I can't remember the name, Beacon XL Plus, and it says joined K-Murder Mansion. So it's definitely doing its thing. And one other thing I wanna to touch on with this relay, uh, it's, this isn't the device you're gonna be using to actually connect to and use as your, like, primary mesh-tastic node. You're gonna, you're gonna want like a secondary something or other inside the house that'll be able to communicate with this and then to the relay and then to whoever else is out in your area. Right now I have this set 
at three skips or three hops rather. Uh, just there's nobody in the area that's on Meshtastic. I've seen like one person. Um, so I'm just gonna rock with the default settings, but just know that if you're gonna have this up, you're really gonna want another Meshtastic device that you're actually gonna use like inside your house or you know somewhere away from that because the Bluetooth range doesn't last long. So that's what this is for. All right, so it's been a couple weeks since that last clip, and I really just wanted to kind of test everything on this. First, just how well does it perform outside? Well, in the last two weeks, we've had sunny days, we've had cloudy days, we've had thunderstorms, we've had high winds. This thing is held up to all of it, no problem whatsoever, it never missed a beat. So as far as uh, enduring all weather conditions, at least for me in South Texas, it passes with flying carpets. I also did a range test. I took the Spec 5 Beacon XL and I basically just kind of drove around Huntsville, Texas and did uh, some tests to see how far I could get. Uh, I went about a mile east of here, connected to it no problem. I went two miles north of here and was able to connect to it. I, I was using a, let's call it an aftermarket antenna, a little bit more high gain antenna with the Spec 5 Beacon. So I was able to get out a little bit further. Uh, about a mile south of here, I had no problem connecting. Uh, I did go about a mile east of me. I went to the Sam Houston State University football field. I wasn't able to connect there, uh, but surprisingly, my area is actually kind of hilly. And although the antenna is roughly 25 feet up in the air, between me and the stadium, there's just, the ground is in the way. Um, I suspect if I went a little bit further west, it goes, uh, or excuse me, east, it goes up in elevation a little bit more. But basically, if I drive south out of my neighborhood, my VHF antenna is kinda at ground level because I, I go up a little bit. So I don't have, with any of my antennas for VHF and UHF and Meshtastic, anything up that's, that's, that's really, really high above the overall ground. But still, they advertise one to three miles of range for this, and that's what I got. So I didn't go around and test every single spot in my area, but I'm pretty happy with the range I get. Inside the neighborhood, no problem whatsoever, and kind of the surrounding area. So, And as I was driving around, I actually saw more, more Meshtastic nodes. In terms of the solar, uh, there were no problems whatsoever keeping the battery charged. This thing uses so little power. I actually unplugged the battery once and I was sitting under my uh, porch and it was in the shade and a, the shaded solar panel was still enough to provide power to the rack unit that's inside there. So this thing just sips power. I've never seen it below, I think like 81% was the lowest that I've ever seen it. Right now, it's fully charged, it's noon, the sun's out, there's not a cloud in the sky. So yeah, very, very impressed with this. I was able to make a couple communications with this. I basically just, you know, sent a hello message on the, on the uh, what's it called, the primary channel, although I can't find those messages now, so I screwed something up. Again, I am learning about Meshtastic, so don't be too hard on me in the comments. But this thing's picking up nodes. I mean, we've got the K-Murder Mansion Relay at the top, then it's got the Spec 5 Beacon, then Frankum is a mile away, then my ham radio tube, that's my Seed Studio thing, and then we've got this Meshtastic 7 Echo Bravo 8, who's two hops away. Meshtastic Delta Bravo 9.6 is one hop away. There's some other ones, looks like, and now we're going back in time here a few days. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's people out there, it's doing something. So this is kind of the first, mm, probably the first relay of this type in Huntsville to hopefully help my community with this kind of communication. So that's cool. I did do one other thing. Um, if we look, notice I renamed it K-Murder Mansion Relay. That way people who are seeing it know that it's a relay and like don't try to communicate with that. At least that's the thought process behind that. And then I'm using client mute for my devices in here. And the thought process of that is because if it's on client mute, it's not going to 
rebroadcast, and instead I'll be relying on the relay to rebroadcast any kind of messages, if that makes sense. I learned it from a friend who knows a lot about Meshtastic, so that's what I'm doing. So either way, I'm happy to have this. I'm happy to help contribute to the Meshtastic mesh of my area. So thanks to Spec5 for sending this out. This has been a, quite the learning process. I still have a lot of learning to go, but <laughs> we now have uh, at least one Meshtastic relay in the Huntsville, Texas area. So that's pretty cool. Guys, if you're interested in one of these, I'll leave a link in the description. Until next time, my name is Mike K at MRD. We'll see you on Ham Radio Tube 73.